<laughs> All right, there's somebody there. Okay, you are God's what? Best. Now you understand how, how blessed I am that you're here. How valuable you are to my life. Because this is the path of courage, path of strength, and commitment. And most people can do that. How many people can do it? Parental distribution dictates that less than 3% can do it. And only one can succeed. You want to be the one out of 100? That's my goal. Are we running? Okay. So let's start off with a story. Okay. This will help set the path, the direction, help set how this works, all right? Now, when I was, when I was, I met, I uh, separated from my dad when I was nine years old. Um, and I grew up taking care of my brothers and sisters, and I, my mom had more children, and it got to be quite a disaster. But nonetheless, um, there was this little picture my sister had. She got it from my mother, and it's me, right? And I'm covered in suds from head to toe. I mean, and I'm in the front yard and you can see me and I've got the hose in my hand. All the ground is covered with suds and I'm looking like this. All right. And I'm like, and you can see off in the corner on the edge of it, you can see the, the bumper of a car. And that car happens to be a DeSoto that time. So I asked my, I asked my, you know, my family where they got it from. And they said, well, the whole story, I had to piece it all together because I remember because I was only six at the time. And I kind of like this. How many remember everything when you were six? Kind of fuzzy? You remember when you were six? No? Okay. How many remember getting born? I sure don't. <laughs> I was slapped the doctor back. But anyway, <laughs> so what's the story on this? Well, I found out that what it was is that this little guy, when he was a little mini person, a rug rat, tried to make his daddy and mommy happy. My dad had got a brand new car. He just bought it. It wasn't exactly new, maybe a year old, but it was in superb condition. He was so proud of it. And this is a time when my family was having a little awkward time, from what I understand. So I decided to try and make everything better. So what I did is I went out there and I got the big bucket that my dad uses to wash the car with. I'm going to do it just like my dad did, right? And instead of just a little bit of that Tide, right, which is granular soap, I poured the whole box into it. The whole box. You don't understand? Those are those big jumbo boxes. The whole thing filled it all, the bucket, all the way up almost. Because I want to make sure that car was really clean. Then I put it to the car and I realized I had to put the hose in there. So I went and got the hose and I put it in the bucket all the way to the bottom. And then went over and turned on the water. Nice cold water. And this big box of Tide. And as I went over there to turn on the water, I kept turning it and turning it and turning it. And of course, I saw that the hose was, was bubbling where there was that in the bucket was bubbling up. And all the soap was coming out. So I went, oh no. So I grabbed the rag I had and I decided to start taking and I, I took the, the, I picked it up with the rag and I had that that like coarse sand that hadn't all been dissolved yet and I rubbed it on the car and I just some more and rubbed it on the car and of course being only this tall I couldn't reach any higher than here so I went all along the side of the car brand new paint job all along the side of the car just rubbing and rubbing and rubbing and rubbing my arm would get tired, I'd rub with the other hand, and rub and rub and rub, went all over the car. By the time I got around the other side, it was caked with this. So 
I went over there and I, I had, uh, we had one of those things where you go like this and it comes out really fast and you go like this and it comes out a little bit, right? So I went over there and turned it on full blast, right? Because, and I was going to wash it off. And so I'm washing it off and, and I had to get really close. So I had to scrape it off with the hose. So I'm scraping it off with the end of the hose all around the car. I got all the way around and I had to go back around again because I had the, the hose had looped around the back tire, the tires. So I had to come back around again and I scraped it and I had it on the, the headlights and I, I broke one of the headlights and I'm trying to get it off. And, I, and, I, and the, the top part here was really hard. It was really hitting it hard with the hose because it was caked up right where the window's at and it kept blasting at it. See, the problem was the windows were only halfway down. And so I'm blasting away at it to get it down. Well, anyway, my dad runs out and he sees me trying to get that stuff off the crack where the door and the window meet because it hardened. And I'm trying to, and I'm pushing on it and trying to get it off. My dad walks out and his eyes are like this big. <coughs> and he goes over there and he turns off the water and he goes, come here. And I go, yes? He goes, never mind. And he goes back in the house and he screams really, really loud. More like, ah, you know, kind of thing, like Darth Vader, you know, ah. And I'm like, then my mother comes out and she looks and she runs and gets the camera. And I'm like this. Anyway, after that picture was taken, I remember, the only thing I remember this whole thing was when my dad opened the door and water poured out. I had shored out the electrical. I had shored out the battery. I had destroyed the headlights. All the interior, everything was wiped out. Brand new <laughs> car becomes absolutely worthless. Am I an evil child or not? That's the question. Am I evil? So what do you do? Should I deserve a whipping? What should I have? What should someone do to me? You see, having knowledge, did I know what soap was? Yeah. Did I know how to wash a car? Yeah. Did I know how to use the hose? Yeah. I knew all these things. Did I know how to rightly do it? No, I didn't. Had anyone instructed me? No. Anyone give me reproof or correction? No. But I knew it. I understood. I didn't know nothing. So the question is, what is evil isn't what happened to my dad's car evil yes or no yes it's evil what happened to my dad's car was evil but the question is was I evil you see the difference am I bad or is there something else involved? Does everybody understand the story? Now, my dad was cool. Because he picked me up, put me on his shoulders, and we walked because I just ruined the car. <laughs> and he took me to an ice cream place and had me ice cream. Then he told me when we get back, we got to clean the car. And he explained to me what I did wrong. And I felt so bad because <laughs> he, he, 
He rewarded me from my heart, but I had to learn what I did wrong. And I was devastated. I had, to, I had not made things better. I had made things far worse. Two years later, my mom and dad divorced. All right. So when we're dealing with the two way of life, there's the thing that's called truth, the way, and life, which corresponds to three, also three important words. The way, the truth, the life responds to three things. Knowledge, wisdom, and? Yeah. So when we, we have the what, like I knew what the hose, how, what the hose was. I knew what the water was. I knew what the soap, the bucket. I knew how to get the, the cloth and the sponge to rub it into the car before I totally destroyed it. A six-year-old, be careful. Watch six-year-olds like a hawk. They think they know something and, we, unless you, and tell them, don't do anything unless I've taught you how to do it. Then set it up so they realize that only your teaching will let work and then they'll learn. Otherwise, they go, well, I can do it. And the pride goes way before. Pride will ruin their pride as a three-year-old. There's pride as a three-year-old. There's pride as a six-year-old. There's pride as a 12-year-old. You've got to be careful on each one of those three levels. Being the oldest of eight kids, I'm fully aware of this. But here we go. What corresponds to? All right. How corresponds to what? Wisdom. And why corresponds to understanding. These are crucial to understand. This is what the whole word of God is. This is what the whole, it doesn't just teach knowledge and wisdom. The reason being is it assumes you're going to live to at least 70. The Bible is designed for people to live to be 70 years of age. The problem is, in the Greek and Roman culture, nobody lived past 30. So they never really gained anything. Only in the East did they understand. I don't care who it was, Alexander the Great, whether it's Caesar, nobody lived past 30. So... And those were the rich and famous. The rest of the people died younger. So when you're dealing with the East, it's different from the West. Because all that the West wants to, the, the, uh, West wants to know is how to use this thing. No. <laughs> it's all they want to know is know what it is and how to use it. That's it. What it is, how to use it. When you got your cell phone, what'd you get? You want to know, you know what it was. They want to know how to use it. You didn't care how it worked. You didn't understand what, what malware was. You just wanted to work. And that's standard Greek and Roman. They only want to know what it is, how to use it. That's it. And, the, and the, when you go to the East, it's a whole different world because you've got to have what? Understanding. So just teaching someone something, that knowledge is of no value unless they can gain what? Wisdom and understanding. They can either learn by your experiences so they don't make the same dumb mistakes, or they can go off and learn it by themselves, which can be a really a heartbreaker. All right, so now this the app when you get the knowledge, you go to the application. What do you have? If you gain, if you find out that you blew it, that doesn't work, and that's exact errors in know in the knowledge you got. And what? Application. Please, this is very impotent. No, important, right? Important is a different thing. You hear about the guy that went in for a vasectomy? <laughs> guy went in for a vasectomy, sitting there waiting, and the guy comes in there with a top hat and tails, bow tie, a tux. The guy says, he, says, he goes, uh, <coughs> why are you here? He goes, I'm here for a vasectomy. He goes, yeah, I'm here for a vasectomy too. He goes, all right. He goes, but why, why are you wearing a top hat and tails and a bow tie and a tuxedo? I don't understand. You're, you're here like me for a vasectomy. Then what are you all dressed up for? 
Because, well, if I'm going to be impotent, I want to look impotent. All right. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Errors in knowledge and application. So he got the, the word, he got the word, but it, it's not the right definition, right? So he's dressed up and he's going to be disappointed. Okay. So applying it is really crucial. You've got to be able to apply it the what? Right way. Knowing it is, is ridiculous. It's, it's, it's totally invalid. Because unless you have the knowledge and know how to apply it, you're going to wind up with tears, sorrow, and distresses. And these happen in two places. In applying the knowledge and the second level of gaining what? Understanding. Because in our culture, we want everything... The whole world problems are taken care of in 40 minutes. You know what I'm The world's about to be destroyed. Please, someone save us. Dun, 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 dun. 40 minutes of the movie, bang, the solution. The world's destruction is, is curtailed and saved. And it's all within the last seconds as the clock ticks. After 40 minutes, the world is saved. But that's not how life works. Sometimes it takes a whole lifetime, not just 40 minutes. And we assume everything takes 40 minutes. That's not how it works. You ever try and plant a plant, plant a seed, you expect it to grow? Plant it, 40 minutes later, it's still not there. So you dig it up, is the seed still in there? Plant it back down. Wait the next day, dig it back up. Why aren't you growing? Top it back in there. It's been a whole day now and nothing's come up. It doesn't work that way. Life does not work in a 40 minute span. It just don't. The biggest thing is patience. How in applying, no matter how long it takes, you keep doing what is right. And don't give up. So before we apply it, we think we know, and this is Oido or Ido. This way you think you know it because you've got it in your mind. So if I say, if I say Antarctic, you got it in your mind. You got a picture of it. But you have no idea until you go there. Once you step out of that C-130, as soon as that door opens, you realize, where the hell am I? And you look around and all you see is white. There is nothing else to see but white. And when you go like this, it just freezes and falls to the ground. Your mustache, not for you girls, but for you guys. If you lick your lips, they're going to get stiff and hard. I'm talking about your lips, <laughs> your mustache. You don't lick your lips in that temperature. And if you do have any moisture on your mustache, when you press on it, it breaks off. Your eyelashes, same way. If you tear, where your tear comes out at the end on your eyelashes, it freezes. Your wear, your clothes is not just to cover you. It's to cover your face and you have a little hole where you can see through. And you're t covered in this hood when you come out. That is cold. I don't like that cold. <laughs> but you see, we think we know because we've seen pictures. Pictures don't convey it. The loss of feeling in your fingers. The loss of feeling in your nose. In your ears. In your toes. Then you realize, oh my God, how do I get inside like immediately? And it only takes the first 30 minutes. Cold. Well, I know Antarctic. No, I know the Antarctic. I went there once and I had no intention of ever going back again. All right. So, errors in what? Knowledge and what? You may think you know, but until you feel and you, the sensations, the realization. How many women before they got married think, oh my gosh, those who are, you know, are married. 
like one of these days I'll get married and live happily ever after, all right? It, it, no, it, it's not how it works. I'll have children and they'll love and honor me their whole life. No, that's not how it works. See, we have these misconceptions and until we apply them, we don't understand. Every guy thinks, well, once I have a woman love me, I'm all set. No, that's just the beginning. These are levels you go to and you, th you think it's forever after. No, from that point on, it just gives, there's a whole new world that comes with it. So what we conceive and what is reality, this is where we start to apply reality. And it's like, oh, it doesn't work. You've got to understand that. And when people teach something that you disagree with in your Edo, no, that's not the way it is. And they're telling you, oh, yes, it is. Well, it's not going to be that way for me. And then like six months later, they're like, oh, shit, that didn't work. <laughs> what happened? I had a gentleman I know who decided to have some chickens, right? And decided to get a rooster because you can't have eggs without chickens. Isn't that right? You've got to have a rooster in order for the chickens to have eggs. No, you don't. Just got to have hens. They automatically lay eggs. But we assumed that you got to have a rooster or the chickens aren't going to lay eggs. Now, where the, ch the rooster comes in is after four years, your hen's no longer laying. Now we introduce a rooster. And when he starts strutting around, <laughs> that chicken starts laying eggs. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so there's two types of knowing. That which you would conceive in your mind from watching television, reading books, talking to people, which they never tell you the truth anyway. And then there's that which is the real experience that no one likes to talk about. All women who are married and have children want to get the single woman to get married and have children like really quick. So we can all feel miserable together, right? <laughs> All the husbands want the single men to get married so they can sit back there and say, yeah, it's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> they have no idea what they're getting themselves into. That's why we have a bachelor's party for everybody to luck yuck it up. <laughs> All right. So there's what you think you know and what is reality. This is a double-sided blade. Entering in and coming on the other side. You will not be the same person on the other side. This is growth. But it's only in one area. No, it's in all the areas. Is that making sense? So, where is the locations of change happened? Well, out here, knowledge is by, by watching, listening, hearing. So that's like not a big deal. That's just basically the mind. This, the mind is the gateway to your the insides. Because what does God look at? God looks only on the what? Heart. The heart. That's all he sees. So what you do on the outside is totally irrelevant. It has no bearing on, you may convince others that you know your stuff, but God says, no, you don't. You're lying. You're telling people something that's not true. Something you have no idea what is. And this is where we like to fool each other, and we, get, we give each other awards for the person that best fools us. They call them Oscars. And we paid them lots of money because you fooled me better than anybody. <laughs> you made me believe you were something you were not, and therefore you need millions of dollars and an award. Because I really believed you were that person. So our culture is Greek and Roman. We worship, we honor, we love people that deceive us. And we reward them greatly. So the locations of change and development is in the mind. But that's only Oedo. To get on this side, that is where Gnosko comes in. That's the how. That's wisdom. And that happens in the what? In the soul. And that designates who you are. Then you develop even further. I want to stay a baby. All right, Peter Pan. Good luck. Nothing's going to work for you. You've got 
to get involved. You've got to try out what you think is right. And it's going to hurt. You're going to be disappointed. But if you can hold on and get through it, you get to grow even further. Is that making sense? The last place it develops is a greater understanding of reality, which happens in the heart. Did you got it? This is what is God looks at. How much of reality is that God has that you have? This don't change. God don't see you. This is everything. But in order to get to there, you've got to go through the mind, then the what? The soul, and then the heart, and then it builds, it grows from the inside out. And to where the heart changes the soul, and, and then eventually it changes the what? The mind. But you've got to break through these boundaries. So the mind feeds the soul, the soul, the heart. But the word of God doesn't go to the mind. The word of God doesn't go to the soul. The word of God is directed to go right to the heart. And as it goes in, this grows and finally influences and changes the soul and then continues to grow and then finally changes the mind. Got it? That's the procedure. That's why coming in is rough. Coming in is painful. Coming in is distressing. The coming in is disappointing. And people are like, forget this. I'm just going to live in my fantasy. Yeah. I mean, I question, ask you a question. What do you think the majority of people like to do? Strive to make themselves better or play a game? Why? It's easier. You don't, yeah. Come back to where you were before, conquering the dragon, having all the women in love with you. Being honored as a ruler and leader when you've never learned anything. Games are much easier. There's no pain involved. But even learning how to walk, how many times did you hurt yourself? Wouldn't it have been easier to stay crawling even to this day? No, I want to walk. People say, I want to get to the point in my life where I never have to work again. Everybody will give to me and I don't have to do anything. What do you want to be, a quadriplegic? If you can't take care of yourself, you have nothing. All right. So the question is, when I was that little mini person, that little rug rat, that little curtain climber, carpet commander, did I really, really know what the hell was going on? I thought I did. So the question is, was I sinful? Was I evil? <coughs> so here we go. We have this question. I want you to memorize the statement, right? Great, got it? No, you didn't memorize it? Tell me what it is. You didn't do it. All right, I'll try it again. All together now, ready? Absence is not substance. All right, this is an Eastern concept. Not Easter, Eastern, right? So I'll go for the Easter bunny. No. <laughs> Absence is not what? Substance. When you make an absence of something, like we had a chair that had nobody in it. Well, how do you get in there? No, there was nobody in the chair. Well, how, where did he come from? Absence of substance. You understand? By saying it's nobody or somebody sitting in the chair, it sounds like it's a real person. Nobody sounds like a person. But it's not nobody sitting there. It's nobody sitting there. <laughs> All right. Let's try, let's try this, okay? What is greater than God more evil than the devil, the poor have it, the rich need it, and if you eat it, you die. Oh. 
One more time. <laughs> what is it that is greater than God? More evil than the devil. <laughs> the poor have it. The rich need it. And if you eat it, you will die. And the answer is nothing. Nothing is greater than God. There's nothing more evil than the devil. The poor have nothing. The rich need nothing. And if you eat nothing, you will die. What's the problem here? We have objectified. Given substance to what? Absence. Nothing is not a thing. Right? Repeat after me. Nothing is not a thing. No thing. Right? We have a problem. I should be over here because I'm a we. Right? We on this side have a problem. Because we... When we are in speaking English, I am sick. That's who I am. I am sick. I am tired. I am. Where am I defining myself? Now, the Spanish have got it cool because they, they have it. They carry it with them. I have sickness, nah, 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 nah. You don't. They'll say, well, I've got this. Oh, you think that's bad? I've got this. And you go, whoa. Well, I've got this. Sickness is not a thing. It's nothing for you to exalt yourself or to be worn as a badge of identity. I am sickness. No, you can't be. You don't objectify absence. It's not an object. You don't give it substance because it doesn't exist. And this is the problem when people say, I am poor. Because once you are that, how can you be anything else but that? And when people say, I am poor. Well, here's a million bucks. Ah! Spend it! Whew! I almost was rich there for a second. <laughs> you got, once you declare you are, how do you undo that? If that's who you are, if that's how you define yourself, why and how could you possibly change? I am sickness. Well, then you're going to die real soon. And if you use it to exalt yourself over others, then unconsciously you will seek to be more sick so that you can be better than others. You will seek to exalt yourself because no matter what they pull out, you'll pull out even more. And you think that's bad. I got diphtheria and cancer. <laughs> you understand the problem? Don't make your identity associated with something that is not even real. You will destroy yourself. I'm a failure. You are a failure. You don't have any idea how many times I failed. Well, welcome to life. You started out being born and got slapped. Welcome to the real world. <laughs> well, can't you make birth a little gentler? No, it doesn't work like that. You're going to bleed. You're going to hurt. You're going to cry. That's on your first hour of birth. So don't even think about life being wonderful. You have to work to make anything out of it. And it's going to take sweat and tears. And to think it otherwise then you would be a fool.
So let's look at both sides. How does the West look at that? What is this filled with? What is it filled with? From the West, on the East, it's not filled with anything. But we fill it with what? It's filled with nothing. All right. Let's start off here. Ta-da! El vaseo. Did I say that right? All right, look. This is filled with what? It's filled with what? Nothing. And now I'm going to pour the contents of this into this glass, and you're about to watch a miracle. Here we go. I am pouring the contents of this into the glass. <laughs> Notice it's still full of what? And yet this also now is what? We have a miracle. No. There was nothing <coughs> in this. And there's Nothing. Oh, there's nothing there. <laughs> but Frank, don't you understand? Yes, I understand. But you got to realize nothing is not a thing. Absence of something is not something. Behold, the hara. It's lleno de que. Nada. ¿Qué está dentro? Nada. ¿Cuánto nada? Todo nada. There's nada dentro. All right, there's nothing in there. Now watch the magic. I will now take the contents and pour it on myself. Oh, oh, whoa, whoa, wow. Whoo. Now I'm covered with what? Nothing. nothing. And the the heart is still filled with nothing. A miracle. No, it's not. <coughs> Nada. Nothing. Zero. Nothing there. Absence of something is not something. I don't have to worry. My tank is filled with nothing. <laughs> See, when it goes down, it says that, that a gasoline, now I have extra. No, you don't have anything. <laughs> if you have an empty bottle which is filled with nothing and to pour the contents of the bottle into the glass. Amazing, not only is the glass now filled with the contents from the bottle, but the bottle is still filled. With what? That's right. They are both filled with nothing. No thing. All right, let's look at darkiness. You know what darkiness is? Right? Do you ever seen a dark, a dark bulb? A dark bulb sends out darkness. No, it doesn't. There's no such thing as a dark bulb. That when you set it outside, it just projects this darkness out. No, that's stupid. There's no such animal. No such thing. Right? You don't have a dark bulb. You have a what? What comes out of the light? What comes out of light? What comes out of the bulb? Light. What? Light. light. As in opposite of heavy? No. As in light. It's emanating what? Light. Darkness is the absence of what? Light. Repeat after me. Darkness is the absence of light. Boy, it's sure dark in here. No, there's insufficient what? Light. 
You remove every single photon from an area of space you can, that is like really dark. That's like darky times 10, right? Darky, dark, dark. Dark, no photons. Not one photon of light. It's called what? Dark, right? Like in dark, dark. No photons. Photons are the things that gives light. Those are things that are bouncing off things that you can see reflected. <coughs> the reason you can see something is you've got these things that are called retinas and, and cones. And every time the photon hits something, it comes back. <coughs> the wavelength in which it is is what transmits to your brain as visual, seeing something. Does that make sense? It's the cones in your eyes that dictate what something is as color or shape. So darkness is a limit. No what? Photons. How high can you go in light? You can pack photons to where they're touching each other. I know the smartest particle, not smartest, smallest particle in existence besides a subparticle. That's small. So you can have blinding, intense light and you can have no photons whatsoever. So the limit is what? No photons. Where's the height? Unlimited. Got it? Unlimited. So what is darkness? The absence of what? Light. And that's exactly what they call it in the East. The East mentality is there is an absence of something. The same for darkness, which is the absence of what? Light. So if you're in a dark room, what do you say? This room is it's got darkness in it. How much darkness is in the room? This room needs more. That's it. It needs more light. All right. So how about cold? What's cold? Absence of heat. It's not that heat's the absence of cold. No, 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 no. That's not how it works. It's that cold is the absence of what? Heat. You don't sit there and say, oh, I got too much cold. Would someone take away some of this cold from me? No. You need the room what? Warmed up. You don't need the cold taken out. Cold is not a substance. Cold is the absence of what? <coughs> It's the absence of? Mm. It's the absence of? Absence of? Absence of? Absence of? When you see someone who really loves you and they go, and, then, and they're really cold toward you, what does that mean? There's an absence of heat. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Same for cold, which is the absence of what? Heat. You don't need to have the cold taken out. You need to have some heat put in. Does that make sense? So don't refer to cold. Get in the habit of not saying cold. Get in the habit of not saying dark. There's insufficient light. You don't say it's too much dark in here. Someone turn on the dark. Oh, it's too bright in here. Someone turn on the dark light. What? It's the reverse. All right, now, do you see I cut myself? See, I got, I got a boo-boo. That's what kids go, I got a boo-boo, right? I, I got a wound. Or I've got, I'm sick, or I have sickness. All right, when you get well, where did it go? And if you got sick, where did it come from? If it's a thing, it came from somewhere, and when you got well, it went somewhere. So sickness is not a thing. It's the absence of what? Health. Health, health. It's the absence of what? Health. That's when the people come to the Bible, they're expecting these absences of to be a thing, and the Bible, the Word of God does not acknowledge it. Even the past, there's no Hebrew word 
for was 